Well, hello there, friends. In today's video, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at this guy. This is the Bamboo H2D, the dual extruder version. And in this video, we're gonna answer the question, is this printer actually worth it? Now, as you guys know, none of my videos are sponsored. I spend money on every single product that I purchase. It comes out of my hard earned money. So with that being said, let's break down the cost of this printer. Now, the price for this printer was $2,299. That is MSRP. And the tax in my area was $209.99 bringing it all up to $2,509.98. Now, as we just discussed, this is the dual head version, which means that even though the size of the bed is 350 by 320 by 325 millimeters, in reality, you only get 300 millimeters by 320 millimeters by 325 millimeters. That is, of course, if you are using different materials. Now, you do lose that 50 millimeters if you decide to use different types of materials in the heads. Now, this is the bundle, so of course, it came with an AMS2 Pro. And as you can see, I have one older AMS that I'm using next to it that came with my P1S. Which kind of brings me to the next topic. Why did I purchase this printer? Well, there are two primary reasons. Number one is because I can use very exotic materials on this thing without having to waste money using that exotic material as support. That's one of the main selling points of this machine and that allows you to save money on filament. There are filaments out there that can run you $200 per kilogram and you don't wanna waste that precious material as support. So you can use a stracophrysial material like let's say PLA, saving you quite a bit of money. Now the second reason is of course the dual head. It doesn't have to poop as much in order to produce parts that are only two colors. Now, if there are more than two colors, then it still saves you some time, but you still run into the problem of other printers like the P1S. Now, I do own a P1S and I love that printer. It has gotten me through some pretty interesting projects. And I will say that that printer is still going, but in my case, the bed is just too small. Now, we're not gonna talk too much about the setup here. I will tell you that the setup was relatively straightforward. Unboxing it was not too difficult. If you go online and look at other reviews, you will see the setup procedure, which is relatively easy. And so now let's talk about some of the printing processes. How has this thing performed? After all, you're buying this thing because you want to print some pretty interesting things, right? So how is it held up? How is it done? Let's start with an easy material. This is PLA. These are wire splitters that I designed for a rigid interface. And I gotta say that it actually performed pretty well. I printed four of these in the same bed and it actually championed through no problem. You can see the finishing on this is actually not too bad at 0.2 millimeters of layer height. I would say that that's honestly pretty good. Now, of course, printing four of them is also pretty astonishing. The fact that none of them has suffered any issues. I found that also pretty nice as well. I will say though that I don't know what they did to the bedding, but taking it off is actually a little bit more difficult than say the P1S. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But with PLA, it performed pretty well. And honestly, at this price point, it better because you're paying over $2,000 for this machine if you decide to get it with the AMS. But let's talk about some other material, something that's a little bit more exotic, if you will. And this is ABS. And this is where I'm gonna criticize the machine just a little bit. In my P1S, I printed ABS almost exclusively. And every time that I printed ABS and I took the print off, it came off pretty easily. And it never left behind residue marks that I would consider catastrophic for the appeal, for the visual aesthetics. But with the H2D, you can see that some of these areas suffer some pretty interesting stress marks here. Uh, I'm not sure if it's very visible on camera, 
Uh, but for example, you could definitely see that one right there. I'll try to angle it for you. Uh, and I never had this issue with the P1S. So one thing I did discover is that ABS in particular is actually pretty difficult to get off of the machine uh, compared to the P1S. And that's without any adhesives. And the P1S, I had to use glue once in a while. But with ABS, I'm having a little bit of trouble. Now, it, this actually isn't too bad. I actually put it over the stove with some heat. That's what some people recommended to get rid of those cracks. So this is post-processing. But you can see that if you do that, then it bows the piece quite a bit. And if your part is relying on having some pretty critical flat tolerances, then that can be a pretty catastrophic thing to happen. Now, if it's not aesthetic, then you obviously wouldn't care too much because of course it's at the bottom. But for example, this license plate frame here, it is an aesthetic part and I would like it if it didn't bow too much or have those cracks. I haven't really figured out a way to get rid of them yet. I'm experimenting with some processes here and there. So if you have any suggestions on how to get rid of them, I would love to hear your thoughts. So far, I've tried putting some glue on it, Elmer's glue. That seems to help a little bit. I've also tried to turn off the heater chamber. Honestly, that made it even worse, not because the cracks came back, but because of course at that point, the ABS would just deform. So if you have any suggestions, Drop them down below. Now, in terms of multicolor, you can see that the multicolor works. I mean, this is the selling point of some of these machines. And you can see that over here, all of the colors just transition fluently. There's no color bleed. And I would say that multicoloring wise, this machine performs just as it should. For the price tag, it better damn well perform. Now, as you can see in this video that I'm showing you here, I took a thermal reading of how much heat comes out of this machine. And I also took a thermal reading of the bed itself. Now, you can see that the bed has this type of pattern here that only heats up a certain portion of it, which kind of leads me to believe that some of these issues that people are talking about online could be because of the layout of this heater core. Now, I haven't had any issues with it so far, but for large prints, I could imagine that those areas could lift up a little bit. I would assume that the heater chamber would assist with that, but still, it's just something to think about. Now, if you have the heater chamber on, and if you're printing some pretty exotic materials, then of course it will emit quite a bit of heat. So just keep that in mind. If you walk up to it, it's not gonna burn you, but it's definitely warm to the touch and it will heat up a room pretty substantially, especially if you have no air conditioning in there. I would suggest you leave a window open, but still, I have one in here and I leave the window open, it still gets pretty warm. Now, I will say that the interface compared to the P1S is night and day. Of course, the P1S is marketed more towards a lower production cost. The screen is a little bit more to be desired. And the interface on this bad boy is pretty damn good. It does do this little shake when you need to change a filament out, which kind of lets you know which filament is which, which I found pretty nice. We didn't have that on the P1S. So when we had all these filaments that we were editing, we just kind of had to take a guess sometimes. And it got to the point where I just wrote it down on a piece of paper. But on this one, it's pretty nice. Now, one thing I wanna point out to you guys is that this machine does shake quite a bit. As you can see here, I built this funny little structure here out of 2020 series aluminum extrusions. And I just built it for about 120 bucks. All the materials came from Amazon. And this is actually 24 inches by 24 inches by four feet. That gives you an idea on how big this machine is compared to this structure. So if you are gonna put this somewhere, make sure that what you put it on is very sturdy. This thing is actually on wheels and it doesn't move at all, but it does still shake every once in a while. What do you really get if you decide to print with two heads compared to say the H2S? Why would you wanna purchase this one over the H2S? Well, there are two reasons why you would want to have two heads on the printer. Number one, as I just described earlier in the video, is you get the ability to use sacrificial material for support. Again, some materials are very expensive. You don't wanna waste that material as support you can use a sacrificial material that is way cheaper and you save money. 
And number two, it has to poop less. If you have a multicolored part that is only two colors, it doesn't have to switch filament. As long as you place them in their respective slots, you can just keep going on and on and on. Now, of course, if it's more than two colors, it is still going to have to do that poop sequence, uh, but it still won't be as much as if you had, say, just one head. Now, remember, you do lose that 50 millimeter of additional bed compared to the H2S, and that is really what the H2S has going for it compared to the H2D. Now remember, this is the non-laser version, so it was a little bit cheaper, but still, the H2S only has one head, and it can take advantage of the extra 50 millimeters. So let's ask ourselves this question. Who is this machine marketed to? What, why would I wanna buy this thing compared to say the H2S or even the P1S? Maybe you're on the fence and you're not sure. And let me break it down for you. If you are gonna do some very basic printing and once in a while you will do multicolor printing and it's not you know massive, I would say to just get the P1S. The P1S will satisfy all of your needs and you can find them online relatively cheap. They're actually on sale quite a bit and you might even find one on Facebook marketplace the p1s has been incredibly reliable for me and it's still going it's just in another room it's not in this room here so if that is your goal the p1s is the way to go sure the interface isn't great but honestly everything that you can do on this machine you can also do on the app now if you want to maximize the use of the bed then this machine is clearly not for you because of unfortunately you're losing 50 millimeters so if you are going to print things like this size uh, that are a little bit larger than the p1s and you are interested in multicolor printing then it's just a no-brainer go with the h2s now if you're going to be like me where you're going to be spending money on very exotic and expensive materials that you don't want to waste as support then this machine is for you I use this machine for real engineering purposes in creating actual test fitting parts with very, very exotic materials. And for me, this machine saves me money just on that. I don't have to waste material for supports. Now, you're probably asking yourself, well, what about the X1C? Where does this fit into the equation? Uh, I honestly don't know too much about that machine. What I do know, though, is that it is a little bit more expensive than the P1S. It has almost the same specs, so it's up to you to decide if the extra interface and aesthetics of the machine and a couple of sensors here and there is worth it. I did read that it has some sensor to text spaghetti mode in case your print fails but honestly this printer is very reliable the p1s that i have very rarely had that happen so let us answer this final question is this machine actually worth it well if you're going to be using it for real world engineering applications with exotic materials then yes it absolutely is worth its weight in gold because think about it material that is 200 300 a kilogram you're not wasting your money on it as supports. You're using sacrificial material. So that alone in of itself saves you money. But if you're not gonna be doing any of that, or you just don't need that function whatsoever, and you're just interested in printing large things with multicolor, and none of what I just talked about, then don't get this machine. This machine is not for you, and you're gonna be disappointed. Because remember, you're losing extra bed length with this machine because of dual extrusion. Go with the H2S. That one will serve your purpose much better, and I think that one is geared more for the people who are into the P1S and the X1C. Thank you guys so much. If you have any questions or concerns regarding this machine, feel free to leave them down below. Otherwise, take it easy and take care. Bye-bye.